Okay, so we're busy talking about electric circuits. We are talking to our electrical engineers and uh, here's, a, here's a circuit, okay? And um, uh, each of the edges now is a conductor. We're assuming of unit conductance for this lecture. The blue dots, the nodes are terminals, okay? And they could be at different voltages. Those are what the X, one, two, three stand for. Now, we learned last time that Ohm, Ohm's law says that if I call W the vector of currents in the nodes, then it turns out because the conductance is all one, this is just equal to minus the vector of potential differences, which remember is defined to be A times X. Okay, that's what I'm calling the E. Okay, that's what Ohm's law told us for this unit conductance circuit. And then we had Kirchhoff's current law um, with the acronym KCL for the purposes of brevity, um, tells us about the divergence of the currents at the nodes. And remember, by my definition, this is the divergence, okay? And so the Kirchhoff current law tells us about the divergence of the currents at the nodes. And in particular, if the, if the node is just free, so it's not s s attached to any current source, then Kirchhoff current law says that the value of the divergence at that node must be zero. So here's an idea. You see, I'd like to start getting some uh, intuition about circuits. Okay, so I can tell my friends, electrical engineering friends something. Let's suppose that Kirchhoff's current law holds at all, all the nodes. In this case, there are four nodes. We're going to assume that the Kirchhoff current law holds at all of them, which means that F is identically zero vector, okay? So there's zero divergence of the currents at all four nodes in this particular graph. That's going to be our supposition. Uh, for for now. I'm going to take a little, you see I've called this lecture electric circuits and rank nullity. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of this graph, clear myself some space. Now I've already used rank nullity and if you're doing a course in, if you're doing a degree course in mathematics you will take a linear algebra course and you'll, you'll learn rank nullity theorem. Okay. I like to draw a picture for the rank nullity theorem, and uh, I'll, I learned about this from my colleague Gil Strang at MIT, and uh, he likes to draw this picture, and so do I now. Okay. Um, of course, whenever you talk about rank nullity, there's a there's a matrix involved, and in this case, it's M by N. Okay, and if you think about it, it basically uh, you can think of it as kind of mapping Rn to Rm, okay? Where I'm just using R to the, with the superscripts there to denote the N and M dimensional spaces of real uh, real numbers, okay? Okay. And I'm just going to, um, if I take, if I, if I say the word orthogonal in this lecture, I just mean the, the normal dot product between vectors that you all, you all know about, okay? Just from a basic geometry. Okay. Um, in this, now, now what's, what the idea here is, is that uh, this is being the totality of these two boxes. So that's why I've put Rn under this box, because that whole, those two boxes put together make up the whole of Rn. And similarly, if I'm over here, these two boxes put together make up the whole of Rm. Okay, so these are different size spaces, if M and N are different. Um, and this one is Rn and Rm. Now, in here, I am going to put the space of vectors x such that Ax is zero. Okay, now do you remember what we called that? That's a subspace, okay? It's a vector space itself. It's a subspace of Rn. And do you remember, we called this the right null space of A. Okay, so that's what that box is on the lower right. Over here, I'm going to write this as the, the set of vectors x that equal A transpose W for some W, where this is just some vector of coefficients. I'm thinking of that as vector of coefficients. Okay, 
So it's the space, that top box is the space of uh, vectors x that can be written like a transpose w for some, some choice of w, some coefficients. So what I'm really doing there is I'm taking a linear, with w, those are the coefficients, I'm taking a linear combination of the columns of a transpose. But of course, the columns of A transpose are nothing other than the rows of my original matrix A. So this is really the row space of A. Okay, so we've got the remarkable fact. Oh, let me, let me finish. The reason I've drawn it like this, it's nice. It's because, look, I've, there's a little intersection there. And I've also got, let me draw it in a different color, so the green maybe, I've got a nice right angle that I've drawn there, okay? And by the way, that, uh, that point there is the origin, or, or the zero vector, I mean, okay? And of course, we know that every vector space has to contain the zero vector. And what this picture is telling me is that this space Rn is made up of the right null space of A, and the row space of A, and they are orthogonal complements of this vector space Rn. That's what the Ragnarosy theorem says. Okay, that's quite remarkable. Now, over here, let's do the same thing over here. Interestingly, remember, when I'm in Rm, I like to denote the vectors by W, right? Those are the kind of the edges. Um, over here, I'm going to put the space of W's, vectors in Rm, that satisfy W transpose A is equal to zero. And do you remember what we called that? Yes, indeed. We called that the left null space of A. Okay, that's the left null space of A. And up here, I'm going to put the vectors W that can be written as A times X for some vector of coefficients X. Okay, so if I'm taking AX, that basically means I'm taking some linear combination of the columns of A. So W is some linear combination of the columns. I guess what we call that. This is the column space of A. Okay. And so uh, what over here with RM, it turns out, again, of course, we have this beautiful zero vector in that space sitting there. And then uh, let's get my green out again. And I'm going to draw that nice um, right angle symbol there because I'm, it turns out that, again, the left null space of A and the column space of A are orthogonal complements in Rm. That's rank nullity. And by the way, the result we've already used in the rank nullity theorem, it's a not, it's kind of separate statement, is that the dimensions here is equal to R which is the rank. And the dimension here is R. That's the remarkable result as well of the rank nullity, that the dimensions of the column space and the row space are both R. Now, if that's true, and these are orthogonal complements in Rm, then the dimensions of the left null space are M minus R, and the dimensions of the right null space is N minus R, okay? So there it is. That's a beautiful picture. I like that. Um, and uh, it's the Ragnarosy theorem in pictures. I like these pictures. And let me show you why. Well, I'm going to get uh, perhaps a red out here. We have supposed, let's think about what this Ragnarosy theorem says for electric circuits. And remember, we've just assumed that the Kirchhoff current law holds at all of the nodes, okay? So we have assumed that F, which is equal to zero, and remember that was minus A transpose W. That's our assumption. Now, look at this, A transpose zero, if I just take the transpose of that, That's just W transpose A is zero. Okay. And that is precisely this. Okay. 
So what we've done by assuming that Kirchhoff current law holds at each node is to say that, if you like, we're in the left null space. Now look at the, what the rank nullity theorem says. Let's think about, by the way, when we're talking about circuits, what does the column space mean in terms of circuits? W is equal to AX. Well, W, if it's a current, we know is equal to minus AX. The minus sign doesn't make any difference. You know, it just changes the X, puts a minus sign in front of the X. So the left, the, the column space of A is precisely the set of currents, W, that can be derived from a set of potentials X at the nodes. And according to Ohm, those are the only currents that can exist in a circuit. We can only get currents if they are given by potential differences of the voltages at the nodes. Okay. Now, if we've assumed that Kirchhoff's current law holds at all nodes, then it means we're in the left null space. The rank nullity theorem then tells us that we cannot possibly, because these are orthogonal complements with the only intersection being the zero vector, we cannot possibly realize that, that, that current in an actual circuit because there isn't an x for which w is a x. The only x is zero. That's what the rank nullity theorem tells us. Okay? If we assume Kirchhoff current law at all the nodes, the only flow that we can have is zero. There isn't a set of potentials, voltages, that can lead to that particular current that satisfies Kirchhoff current law at all the nodes. Let me just see if that can possibly make sense. It seems, it seems rather remarkable, doesn't it? Well, let me just draw a picture then. I'm just going to, you see what you, this is what I do as a researcher, researcher if, I, if, if I come across something and I can't, don't believe it or I'm wondering if it can really be true. I just try out some things. Well, let me put it this way. I've just drawn a little circuit and let me draw some arrows on there and let me assume that the, that's WA is 1, WB is 1, WC is 1. Why do you think I've drawn that? Well, that's the simplest one of the simplest circuits I can think of where Kirchhoff current law holds at all the nodes. Okay? Because look, there's one coming in here, but then there's one going out there. Similarly, there's one going in there, but it's coming out there. One going in here, coming out there. All right. Now, this satisfies KCL at all nodes. So apparently, I will never be able to find According to my rank nullity theorem, I'm never going to be able to find a set of voltages for which I can realize this current according to Ohm's law. Well, you know what? Let me just try this out. Suppose that this voltage is zero. Then because the current down here is going in that direction and conductance is one, then it means that this must this one must this one must be at a lower potential by by one, lower voltage by one. So that voltage must be minus one if Ohm's law is valid there. Now, if Ohm's law is valid here, this one must also be at potential one below this one, which makes it minus two. But now look, I have reached a contradiction because if I want a unit current in this direction, this better be minus three, but it's not, but it's zero. So, in mathematics, we like to draw that little symbol to say, wow, it doesn't work. It's a contradiction. So indeed, this is consistent with what I just deduced. Kirchhoff current law holding at all the nodes of a graph means I'll never be able to find non-zero uh, voltages that will, that will produce that current as uh, in accordance with uh, Ohm's law. Okay. <sighs> Okay, well, let's just go back to this then. Or rather, let's go back to this. Here's what we just started with, okay? We started with this and we reached the conclusion that the only flow that we're going to find is zero flow. 
There isn't anything interesting if you do that. So, okay, and rank nullity is what told me that. So what can I do now? I want to do something. I can't go to my engineers and say, oh, sorry, can't get it. What do we do to release this constraint? Well, KCL holds all the nodes, means there can't be a flow. Well, how about must assume there's no doubt, there's no option now. We must assume, if we want something interesting, must assume that f is not equal to zero somewhere. In other words, some of the elements of f have to be non-zero, otherwise this will hold and then I don't get anything. Okay, so I've got to set up some of the divergences to be non-zero at some of the notes. There's no question. But I can be more precise and rank nullity helps me here as well. Let's go back to rank nullity. If I now, if I now say that, oops, if I now say that f is non-zero, and remember it's minus a transpose w, okay, look at this. This means that f, of course, which is equal to that, is in the left, is in the row space of a, okay? And rank nullity tells me that anything in the row space is orthogonal to the null space of A. Okay? So I'm forced to have F non-zero. F is in the row space, and by rank nullity, it's orthogonal to the null space. It has to be. It's, that's what rank nullity tells me. So, um, so in other words, F must be in the row space, and orthogonal to the right null space. This is useful information because we know. Do you remember this vector here? One, 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 one. I think that dates back to lecture one. This satisfies this. It's in the right null space of A. So from rank nullity, I already know I must have, there's no question, I must have f transpose x naught equal to zero. These must be orthogonal in this sense. What it means, of course, these just have uh, ones everywhere. It means that the sum of the elements of, if I call f, you know, f1, f2, f3, f4, it means that the sum from i is equal to one to four must be zero. That's what this means, okay? So I need this constraint to hold if I'm going to find anything consistent. Okay, well this is great news. I am learning a lot about what I can do to get something interesting and then uh, how to do it. Well, I don't know about you, but I like to start things simple. I know I must have non-zero f. I also know that that f must satisfy this, okay? Well, I've got an idea. To keep things as simple as possible, let's just set f1 equal to, say, f, and then f2 or some other node equal to minus f. Well, let's, maybe let's call this f hat because it's a number, okay? And then f3 and f4, let's keep those all zero, okay? So in other words, we've got a positive divergence at node one and an equal and opposite divergence at node two so that they add up to zero, which is consistent with this, and then we won't have, we'll have Kirchhoff current law holding at the other two nodes three and four. These are exactly what we call two-point source sync circuits. And you can see that there's, if it's the first natural thing to look at if you want a non-trivial flow in a circuit Okay, if you if you look at what rank nullity theorem tells you, you're allowed. Okay, we'll do more on this next.